Number 15. Banff Springs Hotel One of the many Canadian architectural achievements, the Banff Springs Hotel is located in Banff, Alberta in the middle of the Rocky Mountains. It was built by the Canadian Pacific Railway as part of a series of hotels they constructed across Canada, and is built around some of the natural hot springs. The hotel is allegedly home to several spirits and further mysterious within. One famous spirit of the premises is that of the late bellman Sam, who reportedly threatened to haunt the place after his death. It appears Sam kept his promise, but has said to be a benevolent spirit. Guests have reported being helped to their rooms by an elderly Scottish gentleman, matching Sam's description. He also is said to randomly open and close the hotel doors, not to scare guests but as his way of saying hello. By far the most famous ghost at Banff Springs is the Doomed Bride. Guests have claimed to see a woman in a bridal gown dancing in the main ballroom, but disappears upon further investigation. The hotel's main historian has stated the apparition is probably that of a woman who fell from the curved stone steps and died before her wedding banquet that day. Then there is the legend of the missing room 873. The legend goes a family was murdered in room 873 and the murderer was never caught. After the room was refurbished and bookings there recommenced, guests sleeping there would constantly report various disturbing incidents, claiming they heard hollow screams, lights flickering and turning on at random, and even bloody handprints on the mirror of the bathroom. As the legend goes, the hotel owners decided to stop booking out that room, and instead had it drywalled over. To this day, hotel staff are forbidden to speak about the room leading to the idea of Room 873 existing to be a credible idea. Number 14. The Coronado A true spectacle of the Pacific Coast, the Hotel del Coronado is located in San Diego, California, and is a magnificent resort for those who can round up the cash to stay there. Fans of classic Hollywood will recognize the Coronado as the main centerpiece of the film Some Like It Hot. However, there are stories of an unhappy spirit wandering the halls. Back on Thanksgiving Day 1982, 24-year-old Kate Morgan checked into the Coronado, claiming to be waiting for a young gentleman to join her. Five days later, hotel staff discovered her dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to her head. Kate had been married but was estranged from her husband, so people believed she was making a liaison with her lover, but he had either been delayed, sidetracked, or simply stood her up leaving her alone and unhappy. Guests who have stayed in Kate's room since have claimed the lights will flicker, the television turns itself on and off, an unexplained breeze will rush by them, and the temperature will suddenly get very cold without logical explanation. Guests have also seen a young woman walking around the halls, and their description matches those of Kate, leading people to believe she is still waiting for her lover to arrive and take her away. The gift shop has also reported strange occurrences, with products flying off the shelves but landing upright and unbroken. The Coronado remains a beautiful resort, and guests have stated the spirits are friendly, albeit a little mischievous. Number 13. Roosevelt Hotel Hollywood isn't always full of fame and glamour, but also of heartbreak, deceit, and even murder. The Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel is a historic building in the middle of Tinseltown, with its opening in 1927, the beginning of Hollywood's golden age, and since then has gained both a famous and infamous reputation, and is said to be the final residence of several stars of the big screen. Marilyn Monroe's ghost has been reportedly seen reflecting in the mirrors of the hotel's ballroom, and once guests turn to get a glance, she has vanished. Montgomery Clift stayed in room 928 during the filming of From Here to Eternity, and people have said they could hear a trumpet playing from the room, which Cliff was talented at. Coal spots are also frequent around the building, particularly the ballroom. A man in a white suit has been seen playing the piano in the ballroom, and when guests approach to comment on his talented playing, he will vanish right before their eyes. The wife of Clark Gable, Carol Lombard, has also been spotted on the 12th floor where she and Gable often stay together. The most famous and mysterious spirit of the Roosevelt is that of the little girl named Caroline, who has been seen wearing a blue dress, ponytail, and skipping down the hallways and around the fountain in the main lobby. Because of the number of alleged Hollywood figures haunting the Roosevelt, 
Tourists flock there to try to get a reservation. In the hopes of catching a glimpse of Marilyn or hear the soothing tune of Montgomery's trumpet. Number 12, Brown Palace. Denver's most luxurious hotel, the Brown Palace has stood for over a century and hasn't ever been closed for even a single day since its opening in 1892. Named for the builder Henry Cordes Brown, the Brown Palace has gained a reputation for being a high-class place for visitors, which includes celebrities and politicians, including several presidents. However, the palace has gained several spiritual residents over the many years of operation, gaining its notoriety as one of Denver's most haunted locations. Tours are offered of the hotel, and the famous story told by guides is that of the legend of Room 904. Between 1940 and 1955, a wealthy socialite Louise Crawford Hill resided in the room until she died of heartbreak. The room underwent renovations after, but the main lobby would still receive phone calls coming from room 904, despite the room being unavailable to guests. On the other end of the line, the reception could only hear strange vibrations. In 1961, the calls ended as mysteriously as they began. Coincidentally, around the time tour guides stopped telling the story of Miss Hill, many believed the calls were Miss Hill protesting her story being told and her way of asking for her to be at peace in the room she continues to call her home. A former employee of the hotel claimed he heard strange noises coming from the main dining room. When he went to investigate, he found an entire string quartet practicing in the room. He confronted the band asking what they were doing, and they replied, don't worry, we live here. Furthermore, guests and staff have seen apparitions dressed in formal attire. However, the spirits do not appear to be malicious and simply wish to rest in peace within their favorite hotel in the Colorado capital. Number 11, The Ragged Cot. A place that appears frozen in time, the Ragged Cot Inn of Minchinhampton, UK, is itself a time capsule and resembling much of how it did back in its early days. The beginning of the inn's tragic history dates back to December 1760. Then landlord Bill Clavers prepared to rob a midnight stagecoach bound for London. His wife, with their child in hand, begged him not to go through with the crime, but in a fit of anger, he pushed her aside sending her flying down the stairs. In his drunken confusion, he fled the house and robbed the coach. Upon returning to the inn, he was horrified to discover his wife and child did not survive their plummet down the stairs. Panicked, Clavers hid the bodies in the trunk, then paced around the inn trying to think of what to do. Meanwhile, local constables followed Clavers' footsteps in the snow and surrounded the building. As they prepared to enter, they heard the scream of Clavers, who claimed to have seen the apparition of his wife crossing the upstairs doorway. Constables subdued Clavers and tied him to a chair as they searched the premises. Inside, they were horrified to come face to face with the apparition of Clavers' wife, and they fled the house. Finally, when sunrise broke, the constables continued their search and discovered the bodies of Clavers' wife and child. Now confirmed a guilty man, Clavers was tried and executed by hanging. Those staying at the inn are often told by locals about the sightings of the apparitions as they knock back drink after drink, and each has their own story to tell about the ragged caught inn. Number 10, The Queen Mary. For those wanting a unique hotel experience, they should seek out the Queen Mary. The Queen Mary Hotel was once a luxury cruise liner for the Cunard Line from 1936 until being retired in 1967. Since then, it has rested permanently in the Long Beach Harbor, acting as a hotel, restaurant, and museum. However, the ship is said to house the restless spirits of former crew and guests. During the Second World War, the Queen Mary was converted into a troop transport vessel. By the war's conclusion, the ship had transported over 800,000 troops to nearly every Allied campaign. After the Queen Mary transported thousands of war brides and war babies, in what became known as the Bride and Baby Voyages, the Queen Mary is said to be very haunted, as there were 49 reported deaths during its service from the horrors of the war. The infamous Door 13 crushed two men to death at different points of the cruise's operation. Spirits are often observed in the first and second class swimming pools, even though neither are no longer functioning and are used for different purposes. Ghosts are said to be seen swimming and splashing away in the water wearing 1930s swimwear. 
The Queen's Salon hosts the ghost of a beautiful young woman wearing a formal white evening gown, and she has been sighted dancing alone in the dark corner. The Queen Mary has become a landmark of Long Beach, and the spirits resting there have found themselves embedded within the floating treasure. Number 9. The Empress Hotel Those who visit Victoria, British Columbia agree the city is beautiful and rich with history and culture. The most prestiged hotel is by far the Empress Hotel now operated by Fairmont. The hotel opened in 1908 and further extensions were added in 1909, 1914, and 1928. Of course, the hotel is also rumored to be haunted by various spirits who at one point stayed in one of the many rooms there. Several people have reported an apparition of a man with a thin mustache wandering the halls with a cane in hand. Historians believe this matches the description of Francis Rattenbury, the hotel's architect. There have also been reports of a mysterious little girl haunting the hotel, and she frequents the elevators as that's where the room she died in used to be. It was demolished in order to expand the number of elevators due to the hotel's increased popularity. Guests have complained of mysterious knocks on their doors, but no one being present upon investigation. Most agree the spirit is harmless, and simply a child acting normally for her age, just wishing to play pranks and play with the guests. The Empress resident spirits seem to be harmless, with Rattenbury simply wishing to forever reside in his proudest achievement, and the little girl wanting to play and have a laugh by joking around with the guests and staff. Number 8. The Place Deremy's Hotel A building full of bad luck and unhappy history. The Place d'Hermes is one of the most extravagant landmarks of the New Orleans French Quarter. It was originally built as military quarters in 1735 and was later converted into a school. The school tragically burned down in the Great New Orleans Fire of 1788, killing the headmaster and several students. Now operating as a hotel, guests and staff have reported many bizarre and unexplainable incidents occurring in the rooms and halls. One woman discussed how she went out on her balcony to get a view of the French Quarter and began a conversation with a man in the adjacent balcony from her. The conversation was friendly for its duration, but when the woman spoke about it with reception, she was shocked to learn no one was staying in the room at that time. Guests have also heard children laughing, despite none staying in the rooms nearby, and feeling as if someone is watching them from the bathroom as they sleep. A bearded man has been seen wandering around the building and its courtyard and it is believed to be the ghost of the former headmaster, peacefully strolling his former workplace. With New Orleans having a reputation as the most haunted city in America, it will come as no surprise the oldest hotel happens to be the most haunted. Number 7. Chateau Laurier Canada's capital of Ottawa is famous for its spectacular architecture, from the Houses of Parliament to various museums the city has to offer. One of the city's jewels is the Chateau Laurier, one of the Canadian Pacific Railway hotels and sister hotels such as the more famous Chateau Laurier in Quebec City and Banff Springs Hotel in Alberta. Built in 1912, the hotel was named for Sir Wilfrid Laurier, the seventh Prime Minister of Canada and the country's first French-speaking Prime Minister. The man who commissioned the Laurier, Charles Melville, was bound for Canada in order to attend the opening ceremony, but was unfortunate to have sought passage on the Titanic. He was one of the many souls lost on the ship. Just 12 days before the hotel's completion, guests and staff have seen a ghost wandering the halls, and descriptions match Melville, leading many to believe he has chosen his hotel as his final resting place as he was unable to see it in life. Various famous historical figures, both Canadian and international, have been spotted in the Laurier, including Canadian humorist Stephen Leacock, Albert Einstein, and even Winston Churchill, all of whom were known to frequent the Laurier during their visits to Ottawa. Guests have written reviews of the hotel detailing their paranormal experiences, but all seem to agree it has not deterred their wish to return and the Chateau Laurier continues to be a highly regarded hotel in the Great White North.
Number six, Ross Castle. With a history as rich as Ireland's, it's no surprise the island will have its fair share of spirits. On top of its legends and mythical creatures, all around the small country are castles, embedding the history of struggle between the Irish people and the English rulers who constantly ravage the lands. Ross Castle is one particular location, located along the shores of Loch Shaleen. Ross Castle has become not only a historic landmark, but also a popular bed and breakfast. However, with the long history of conflict and turmoil, the castle has its share of spirits. The ghosts are said to be the victims of the notorious Richard Nugent, appropriately named the Black Baron. He once accused a beggar of having a dog steal bread and had the beggar hung on the spot. A cross now stands where the gallows once were. Guests and staff speak on a ghostly figure riding a horse around the grounds, but he is said to be a sign of good fortune, and those who see him have had great luck placed upon them. Therefore, not all spirits within Ross Castle are malevolent, and guests have generally reported a peaceful stay while there stating there was nothing too scary that would not make them wish to return. Number 5. Castle Leslie If you ever wanted to stay in a castle, Ireland is the place to go. Castle Leslie is a genuine medieval castle dating back to the early 1600s, originally home to Bishop John Leslie. It was passed down from generation to generation and is currently owned by Samantha Leslie. Guests, staff, and even Samantha herself have claimed to see various spirits within the walls, all ranging from a variety of time eras. Various people have seen a man in monk robes in the banquet hall, who appears very tall and dressed in black. Despite the intimidating look, the monk is said to be very pleasant, giving people positive emotions, saying friendly greetings, and has become fond of the co-owner, Con Ryan. Those who frequent the Geraldine bedroom have said there is a presence of a child there, and people have reported hearing a child whimper inside. The most famous room in the castle is the Red Room, where the spirit of Norman Leslie supposedly resides. Norman was killed in action during the early days of the First World War. Norman's mother, Lady Majori, awoke one night to find a ghost searching through her drawers. In them were a stack of letters, and Majori stated it appears as if Norman was looking for a particular one. Majori asked, why Norman? What are you doing here? And to her shock and comfort, Norman turned and smiled, a bright light illuminating from him. He then faded away and darkness returned to the room. There are further spooky encounters within the halls of Castle Leslie, but it is best to let any curious listeners venture over and experience them for themselves. Number 4. Hotel Chelsea New York, New York, it's a hell of a town. While well, home to many landmarks, the Hotel Chelsea has seen its share of celebrity visitors, making it a haven for fans of classic and modern stars. Numerous musicians and writers have called the Chelsea their home during its 100 plus years of operation, including Dee Dee Ramone, Tom Waits, Jim Carroll, and Ethan Hawke. Sci-fi author Arthur C. Clarke wrote the renowned 2001 A Space Odyssey while residing there leading many to believe the place is a haven for creativity. Unfortunately, much more lingers in the halls and rooms of the historical building. Punk musician Sid Vicious lived there with his girlfriend Nancy, and it was the site of Sid's horrific drug-fueled murder of Nancy. She is now said to be one of the resident ghosts who now haunt the hotel, due to the horrific nature of her death. Writer Dylan Thomas died of pneumonia in room 206, and guests have reported the feeling of a presence in that room ever since. Celebrity guests of the hotel have even claimed to have experienced paranormal activity in the Chelsea, with Janis Joplin recalling, a lot of funky things happen in the Chelsea. Tourists flock to the Chelsea, not only to see the landmark as it has always been, but also in hopes of catching a glimpse of their favorite celebrity, which may be from beyond the grave. Number 3. The Queen Anne Standing in beautiful San Francisco, the Queen Anne Hotel has become a favorite place for guests, tourists, and special events and weddings. It was originally built as a girls' boarding school, which closed in 1896. It was damaged during the 1906 earthquake, 
and continued to go through various owners and purposes during the 20th century. In 1980, the new owners gave it a renovation and opened it as the Queen Anne B&B Hotel. Guests and staff have reported seeing an apparition which resembles the late Mary Lake, the first owner when the building was the boarding school. She was reportedly heartbroken after the schools closed and left San Francisco, never to return. Lake is a kind spirit and is known to look after the well-being of the guests by unpacking baggage, hanging clothes, picking up dropped objects from the floor, and even tucking the covers over guests as they sleep. Lake takes a particular interest in people staying in room 410, which used to be her office. She enjoys the company and seems to make sure her guests are comfortable and cared for. Because of her generous nature, people have flocked to the Queen Anne in the hopes of experiencing her kind heart and to learn more about her. Mary Lake is an example of how not all ghosts are to be feared, and they simply wish to rest and even make the living feel good while in their presence. Number 2. Bali Galley Castle Hotel Northern Ireland is home to lush green fields, magnificent cliff views, and an abundance of history. Bully Galley Castle in Antrim was built as far back as 1625 in a French chateau style. This architectural choice made it ideal for refurbishment as a hotel overlooking the Bay of Bollygolly. The castle saw attacks by the Irish during the rebellion of 1641, though the offenders were repelled. The dark history of the castle is focused on the late Lady Isabel, the wife of James Shaw. According to the story, Isabel was unable to produce a male heir to Shaw, giving birth only to a single daughter. Enraged, Shaw had Isabel locked and isolated in the top corner turret of the castle until she died. Another story states Shaw discovered Isabel was having an affair with a sailor, leading to her imprisonment in the turret. Her spirit is now reported to haunt the room. Isabel is said to change the temperature by raising it as high as 10 degrees. A BBC reporter decided to stay in the room, but was disturbed by a strong smell of coffee and brandy, and changes in the temperature. She fled the room and slept elsewhere in the hotel, as far away from the turret as she could. Several spirits of children have also been seen within the walls, and guests have awoken to the feeling of hands pushing and pulling them, as well as child laughter coming from the doors of the room and several reports of strange knocks on the door are also heavily detailed. Should you hear a knock on your door in the Bully Galley Castle, one would hope it is simply the housekeeper. Number 1. The Stanley Hotel One of the several spectacular resorts calling the Rockies its home, the Stanley Hotel lies in Estes Park, Colorado, with architecture resembling a mix of the original 13 colonies and southern architecture. The area surrounding the hotel is one of the earliest settlements within Colorado, with residents dating back to 1872. The Stanley Hotel was opened on the 4th of July 1909 and later was added to the National Register of Historic Places. With its 100 plus years of operation, the hotel has its fair share of history, and not all of it has left. The Stanley is supposedly haunted with countless apparitions being spotted throughout the grounds. The ghosts of Freeland and Flora Stanley have been seen in formal dress on the main staircase, in the lobby and wandering around the grounds together. People have reported hearing disembodied voices and loud footsteps in their rooms and down the hallways, despite there being no one present. Guests have also awoken to find their blankets taken off their bed and neatly folded beside them. Two rooms have piqued the interest of guests. The first is room 418, claimed to be the most haunted room of the hotel. Guests and staff have heard the sounds of children laughing and playing, and guests have complained of the children being too loud, even though no children were present on that floor. Room 217 has a tragic history. After a gas explosion nearly killed housekeeper Elizabeth Wilson in 1911, after her death in the 1950s, she has since taken up permanent residence in 217, opening and closing doors, flickering the lights, and even making appearances to guests. Author Stephen King stayed in this room at the Stanley, and he has credited this visit as his inspiration for the best-selling novel The Shining. Thanks for checking out this countdown. Leave a like so we know you made it to the end. 
be sure to subscribe because we upload new videos every week. My name is Chills and I hope you enjoyed the narration. My Twitter is at YTChills and my Instagram is at DylanIsChillinYT. I'd really appreciate a follow and feel free to send me a DM if you have any comments or suggestions. See ya.